Number one, which equation can be represented by a graph with a vertex at one comma three? So we see that all of these are in vertex form. So then you wanna remember that for vertex form, we have x minus the x coordinate squared and then plus the y coordinate of the vertex. So this number that goes in here will appear to be the opposite because we've got this minus and then the number on the outside will be exactly the same as the um, y value in your vertex. So we have a one for our h value. So it's gonna say x minus one, right? So if instead of this h, I put a one, and then we have our k is our y value. So instead of k, we would put three. Then this would be the equation that we have. Um, and we can see that that is option A. Number two, where is the vertex of the graph represented by um, this equation? And so we can see that our x value is going to be 2 because remember it's going to say that it's going to look the opposite for that x value. So our x value is 2 and then our y value is outside of that function or outside of the parentheses and the same as what it looks like. So then we have a negative 8 for our y value. So our vertex is 2, negative 8. And then what would be the y-intercept? So remember the y-intercept is on your y-axis, which means that you're going to have a point that has an x value of zero. So we wanna plug in x equals zero and find out what the y-coordinate will be. So then we'll put in zero for x minus two squared and then minus eight. So then zero minus two is negative two squared minus eight. Negative two squared is four, minus eight is negative four. So our y-intercept is going to be the point zero, negative four. And we're gonna have to graph these, so I'm gonna put it on here. So we've got zero, negative four as our y-intercept, and then our vertex was at um, 2, negative 8. Then it says name another point. And um, remember that this is the graph of a parabola, and we know that a parabola is symmetric. Whoops, that's very not symmetric. Okay, is symmetric. So there's this middle line, right? And we know that if we go the same distance this way, as we go this way, it will give us the same point um, or the same height. So when we think about this down here, okay, here's our vertex. If we go over from two to zero, we're at negative four. So if I go to this way, I should also be at negative four so that these are aligned or symmetric. And so then we can just look at what that point would be and that would be the point four, negative four using your graph. So that's one way you can do it, okay? Is we know it's gonna be symmetrical around the vertex. Another thing you can do is just plug in any value you want into this equation, right? So you could have plugged in anything you felt like because it just says give one other value. So if you wanted to go ahead and plug in um, one, you could, right? So you could go y equals one minus two squared minus eight and calculate that. So one minus two is negative one, squared is positive one, so one minus eight gives us negative seven. So we would know that this point was on there. So then at one, we'd be at negative seven. Now, when you have to graph it, I would suggest doing the one that's symmetric because that'll help you get your branches on there, right? Doing just like if we didn't have this one on here, we would only know this side, right? And then you want to get something over here to connect as well. But, and you can graph as many, or you can plug in as many points as you want. Number three, the function V is defined by this. Without graphing, determine the vertex of the graph. Um, representing V that and whether it shows a minimum or a maximum. OK, 
Okay, so determine if the vertex of the graph is a minimum or a maximum. And this has to do with this value. So this is positive, meaning that your graph is going to open upward, which means your vertex is down here, and that means that it's a minimum. Number four, match each graph to the equation that represents it. So we've got all these graphs over here. Here's all the equations. So one thing I notice right away is these values that are negative. So I know that these two are going to be opening down, which means B and D. So B slash D are the ones that open downward. Um, so I can narrow down those graphs. Then I know because this one is a two and this one is a one third, this one is going to be narrower or skinnier than the other one. So that's going to be our B graph. Okay, downward and skinnier is going to be our B graph. So number one goes with B, which means that number four goes with D, that one third, okay, when it's less than one when it's between zero and one is going to flatten it. So it's going to be flatter um, than a number bigger than one. Then you can see these ones, okay, so two and three must be for um, the ones that open upward, right? So these are your AC graphs. And this one is at a six. So this is going to be the skinnier one or the narrower one. And so that's for graph C. So number three will be graph C. And then graph A will be number two. Number five, here's a graph that represents y equals x squared. Describe what would happen to the graph of the original if the original equation was changed to one half x squared. So when we have that number out front, so one half is between zero and one. So this is going to be flatter or it's going to make it, you know, less steep or less skinny, so it's going to widen it. So if you want to just think about what it'll actually look like, it's going to be widened. The technical thing that's happening here is it's doing a vertical stretch by a factor of one half, meaning it's taking all the heights and it's cutting this distance in half. So that's making it narrow out because it's making these values half as high as they are. So then it's making it wider. Then um, for this one, if we changed it to x squared minus eight, this minus eight is gonna make it move down. So that's a translation or translate it down eight units. So if we did both of these at the same time to get this new graph here, right? So we're going to move it down to negative eight, and then it's going to widen out. So then it's going to be wider than this. So this one, if I just did this, so I can show you that mine is wider, right? So it's going to widen it or flatten it. Number six, Claire throws a rock into a lake. The graph shows the rock's height above water in feet as a function of time in seconds. Select all statements that describe this situation. So the vertex is 0.7529. And that's true because when it's opening downward, the vertex is the maximum. The y-intercept of the graph is 2.1 comma zero. That's false because this is the x-axis. So this is the x-intercept, not the y-intercept. Um, Claire dropped the rock into the lake. So here's where it started and the rock is going up to start. If she dropped it, it would just be like this. So this one is false. The maximum height of the rock is about 20 feet. So the max height is at 20. No, the max height is 29. That's actually the initial height of the rock. So that's where it started at was 20 feet. Um, the rock 
hits the uh, the rock hits the surface of the water at about 2.1 seconds. That's true. Okay, that's what's happening here is it's getting to a height of zero after 2.1 seconds, meaning it's hitting the water. And then F, Claire tossed the rock up in the air from a height of 20 feet. This is true. So here's the starting position of the rock, and then it's getting thrown upward starting at 20 feet. So F would be true. Number seven, two objects are launched into the air. The height and feet of object A is given by this equation, and the height and feet of object B is given by this one. Both functions, T represents the seconds after the launch. So use graphing technology to graph each function in the same window. What's the maximum height of each object and which object hits the ground first? So I graphed them here. And so we can see the maximum height of each. So for object F, the maximum height is 20. And for, or sorry, that's probably, is it object F? Object A, which is represented by function F. And then object B is represented by the graph of G, so that's 27.5 feet. And then it says which object hits the ground first, and oops, I've got to move this out a little bit more so we can see where it hits the ground. And so the one that hits the ground first is the F function, which is object A. So we see that one hitting um, before the other one hitting at like a little bit over, I don't know, 2.1 seconds. Number eight, Andre thinks the vertex of the graph of this equation, x plus two squared minus three is two negative three. And Lynn thinks the vertex is negative two, three. Do you agree with either of them? So remember vertex form will look like this. And your x coordinate of your vertex is h, and your y coordinate of your vertex is k. Okay, so our vertex is hk. And so when we look at this, when we have a minus in our equation here, this is going to look like the opposite of h. So when we look right here, Okay, this is actually minusing a negative 2. So our x coordinate is negative 2. And then this is going to be the k value that's sitting out there. Okay, so when we look at this, we added negative 3. So the k value is negative 3. So our vertex is actually the point negative 2, negative 3, which neither Lynn nor Andre had. So I don't agree with either of them. Um, because the vertex is this, which neither one of them said. Number nine, the expression 2000 times 1.015 to the 12th to the 5th represents the balance in dollars in a savings account. What is the rate of interest being paid on this account? So remember, that's going to come from here. And this, so if we multiply this by 100, or sorry, yeah, by 100, we get 101.5%. Um, and then you need to subtract off the original 100% to figure out what the interest rate is. So 101.5 minus 100 is 1.5%. So 1.5% is our interest rate. Then how many years has the account been accruing interest? And so that's going to be this number, five. So five years. And then how much money was invested? So here's our initial investment. So that's going to be 2000 And then how much money is in the account now? So you would just plug this into your calculator. Um, and you would get 4,886.44. And then it wants us to write 
an equivalent expression to this. And so you could do this in, in a few different ways, but what I'm gonna do is just multiply these together. So we've got 2000 times 1.015 to the 60th power, because I'm just gonna take and do 12 times five, which is 12 months for five years is 60 times that we're getting um, our interest given to us. Thank you. 